Okay. We are on the third lesson of uh, trigonometry. So today we're going to talk about 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90 triangles. And in regards to those, if I don't use an X, if I don't use an X and I just say that each side is one, then this hypotenuse would be one rad two, correct? And on the 30, 60, 90, I'm going to do opposite 30 is my X. I'm going to say it's one. So let X equal one. And then opposite the 90 degrees is two X, two times one. Opposite the 60 is one radical three. So we're going to let X equal one. We're going to do these nine ratios right here. Now ratio is going to mean a fraction, right? Find the fractional value. I don't want a decimal. So looking up above 45, 45, 90 is this right here. And these two are going to be from our 30, 60, 90 triangle. So our 45, sine of 45. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Do you need that on the side of your paper? Sine, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. So when I have sine of 45, I've got, pick whatever 45 degree angle you want. One divided by radical two. Okay, and that, let me do a color, then becomes rad two over rad two, because I have to rationalize the denominator, right? Get rid of the square root in the denominator. Final answer, rad two over two. All right, cosine 45, adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, if I use this 45 degree angle, then adjacent will be one, hypotenuse will be rad two. Same thing I just did. One divided by rad two equals rad two over two. Okay, tangent of 45, opposite over adjacent, I'll just pick this 45 degree, doesn't matter which one. One over one is one. Questions so far on what I'm doing? Sine of 30, opposite over hypotenuse. Look at my 30, 60, 90 triangle now. Opposite over hypotenuse, one over two. Cosine of 30, here's my 30. Adjacent is rad three over hypotenuse is two. Oh my gosh, rad three over two. Tangent of 30 is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent, one over radical three. Rationalize the denominator, right? <clears throat> so, rad three over three. Lastly, number three, sine of 60. Well, here's 60. Sine opposite over hypotenuse, rad three over two. Cosine of 60, adjacent over hypotenuse, one divided by two. And tangent of 60, opposite over adjacent, rad three over one. Okay, now I'm gonna find missing sides. So I'm actually going to find X. You're going to need a calculator for this. Can you guys get your calculators handy? Here we go. If I know the, the angle measure, so this is the first time we've seen this. 
It's not 30, 60, or 90. It's not 45. This angle is 23 degrees. So I look at the angle and I decide, what sides am I given? What sides am I given? So what would that be? Looking at this angle, am I given the hypotenuse? Am I given the opposite? Am I given the adjacent? What am I given? Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse and the what? One of the legs, which equals one of the x. Legs, and it's adjacent. It's not opposite. So I'm given adjacent and hypotenuse. That's cosine. So I'm going to use cosine. I'm given the adjacent and hypotenuse. So here's how we solve this. I write the cosine of 23 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is X, hypotenuse is 30. Cosine 23 equals X over 30. So I created my own equation this time. I created my own equation because I knew I needed to use cosine. I was given adjacent and I was given hypotenuse. All right, <clears throat> now we're just solving a formula. What is the first step to get X alone? How do I get rid of that 30? Somebody tell me. Multiply 30 to both sides. Yep. Yeah. So the 30 then is gonna be multiplied by whatever cosine of 23 is. So you're gonna need your calculator. You're going to have to do, my calculator is a little bit older. I have to do cosine of 23 first, 0.92. Make sure that your calculator, when you enter cosine 23, gives you 0.92. So now I'm going to do this value times 30, 27.6. Okay, that means that this side length is 27.6. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do number five. I have to decide, should I use sine? Should I use cosine? Should I use tangent? What am I given? I'm given a 41 degree angle and I'm given the side adjacent to it and the side opposite. Adjacent and opposite is tangent. Use tan, opposite over adjacent. I'm gonna do tangent of 41 equals 15 over X. Tangent of 41 equals 15 over X. And I've got a trick to teach you. When you have the denominator of a proportion as X, you can just switch the positioning. So here's what I'm doing. 15 divided by tangent 41. You switch the position and then you divide those two. So it's a fun shortcut trick. When the X is in the denominator, you switch positions of these. 15 divided by tan 41. My calculator, if I just do this, worked. Let me show you what I did. I did. 15 divided by 41 tangent 
equals x equals 17 point, and I'll just make it three, round that five up. So play around with your calculator, make sure that you can get 17.3 as your answer. All right, number six. I am given an 18 degrees. I have to decide, should I use sine, should I use cosine, or should I use tangent? <clears throat> what am I given? Here's the angle, 18 degrees. I'm given the opposite and the hypotenuse. So if I'm given the opposite and the hypotenuse, that's sine. Opposite is 25. So here I go. Sine 18 equals opposite over x, 25 over x. <clears throat> and switch, remember, if the x is in the denominator, 25 divided by sine of 18. Eighty point nine. So I have to look at what am I given? Which trig function should I use? I'm going to turn the page. I want to show you something on my calculator. See above the word sine, how there's a sine negative one. Above the button cosine, there's cosine negative one. Above the word, the button tangent, there's a tangent of negative one. That means if I don't know the angle measurement, and that's what we're going to talk about on the next page. To find an angle measure, use the inverse that's sine of negative one or cosine of negative one or tangent of negative one. Okay. Find the missing angles using trick. Here we go. <clears throat> Given the trig value of an angle, use the corresponding inverse trig function. That's going to either be second button so that you can get the, the lettering above the sign button. My calculator has a shift button, but yours will have whatever it has. Second shift. So they give this Greek symbol. This Greek symbol is called theta. Theta means an unknown angle. I don't know how big it is. Theta is an oval with like, you like bring a line through it. A lot of people like this is fine. Some people just like do this. So if I don't know <coughs> the angle, I'm gonna use sine of negative one. If I don't know the angle for cosine, I use cosine of negative one. If I don't know the tangent, I'm gonna use tangent of negative one. So theta means, I don't know how big the angle is, use the inverse function. So this is just like the front side, right? Here's the angle measure. I'm given adjacent and hypotenuse. And hypotenuse, use whatever adjacent and hypotenuse is, cosine. So here's how we do this. Cosine of 
cosine of theta, I don't know how big, equals adjacent, 18 is adjacent, over hypotenuse, 23 is the hypotenuse. Here you go. Here's your keystrokes. Second function, cosine, 18 divided by 23. That's the buttons that you do on your calculator. <clears throat> Did you get 38.5? Thirty-eight point five degrees. So you have to practice with your calculator. Maybe you have to put eighteen divided by twenty-three first. Maybe you can go in the exact order I just showed. Every calculator is different. I'm gonna do number eight. Ready? Use what? <clears throat> Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse is gonna be five over 12. So I'm gonna use sine. Opposite of this theta, this angle is five, hypotenuse is 21. <clears throat> sine theta equals five over 21. All right, <clears throat> second function, sine five divided by 21. <clears throat> My unknown theta Thirteen point eight degrees. Did you guys get that? If you're not getting these, you've got to tell me and I can help you out. This is only you use the second function if you don't know the angle measurement. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's do the word problem. A plane takes off and climbs at a 12 degree angle. Is that angle sufficient enough to fly over the mountain? <clears throat> 12 and a half miles from the runway. Here we go. This is opposite over adjacent, isn't it? Tangent 12 equals opposite over 12.5. Check that out. Tangent of 12 equals X over 12.5. So how do I get X isolated? Multiply both sides by 12.5. So here I got 12.5 tangent times tangent of 12. Let's see how high I get. I want it to be bigger than 11,088 feet. I hope it is. <clears throat> Please know that my answer is gonna be in miles, you guys. 12.5 times 12 tangent equals. 2.6 miles. Well, one mile is 5,280 feet. So 2.6 miles. Oh, I guess I could make it 2.7, couldn't I? Well, approximate, it's fine. 5,280. times 2.6, 13,728 feet. 
that's bigger than the 11,000 foot mountain. That's good. I want the plane to fly above the mountain. Otherwise it's gonna crash. So yes, the plane will <clears throat> clear the mountain. Mister, okay. yeah. Um, can you go over um, up the eighth uh, problem, uh, how to input it into the calculator? Yeah. So, first of all, <clears throat> make sure that the function on your calculator says degree, not rad. Radian is rad. I don't know if you can see this, but see how it says DEG, degree? Degree means that we're doing it in mathematical degrees. If you use radian, RAD, get out of that function. So that's the first problem. If you have RAD on your computer screen, that's bad. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> My calculator, you should be able to press second sign five divided by 21 equals. Does that work on your calculator? Yeah. Okay, did you get 13.8? Um, I got 0.2380. Does your calculator have DEG on the screen? Are you in degree mode, the mode? Or does it say RAD? You know what I can do is I can stop the recording. You don't have to be on recording for this. 